In his book, Slow Productivity, Cal Newport posits an idea that you can create a list in a Google Doc or Microsoft Word document of all the work that you're doing and then underneath that all the work that's waiting to go into your active list. And that got me thinking because I realized that actually you can do this in Todoist. It's a fantastic use of boards and it helps you to see precisely what you're currently working on and what's in the pipeline ready to be done. As I was setting this up, I realized that there are two ways that you can use this. You can use this individually and if you're managing a team of people, you can use it for your team. Now it's up to you whether you decide to share this with your team or not, but it's a great way to be able to see which member of your team is doing what work and be able to see at a glance who has got too much on and who perhaps has space to be able to take something else on. So let me go into Todoist and show you how to get this set up. Let's start with my personal projects for this year. Now I'm pretty good at planning out the projects that I want to do. Some projects will get added as the year goes by. You'll see that Q4, for example, only currently has two projects in, one of which is a trip. So really it's actually only got one project. That's because I know that some of these projects that are in these quarters will probably move over to Q4 at some point. There'll be some new ones that get put in. I mean, it's not static list. This is updated every month because things are changing all the time. That's just life, you know, life gets in the way. But if you look, Q1 has already been done so that all my projects are completed. Usually that's normal for me. I do, with, probably because of the new year enthusiasm, I get all my projects done in the first quarter. It's Q2 and Q3 that I struggle with often. Anyway, that's beside the point. So if you look here, I've got a half marathon, the Ultimate Productivity Workshop on the 18th and the 25th of May. I've got to launch the Your Time, Your Way audiobook, and I have a brand new course coming sometime in June. I'm in the process of developing that right now. Now the half marathon is a personal project. Now the thing about marathons and training for marathons, it's not like you can just run two or three miles three or four times a week and bang you can run a marathon. It takes a little bit more effort than that. So that's something that I know I'm going to need to set aside time for, hence the reason why it's in my project. And I do tend to think of marathons races as projects. The Ultimate work, uh, Productivity Workshop, that's being developed right now. The audio book is already in the hands of my publisher. I'm just waiting to hear back from him to see when it's going to be launched and the time-based productivity course is what I'm working on right now. Now as I am already at the time of recording, we're recording this in April, I do not need to look at Q3 right now. Q3 is off the radar. That is nothing that I need to do except sort out my flights for the trip to Ireland and the UK. That's all I would need to do but other than that everything else is focused in on my Q2 because that's what we're in. We're actually at the beginning of Q2. So this is a great way of seeing what projects you have in place. Now if you're working for a company and you have a boss that keeps throwing projects and big tasks at you, you can do this maybe on a monthly basis. I wouldn't suggest on a weekly basis because it's just too much. That's 52 sections in to do is it would just become overwhelming. You want to try and narrow it down as much as you can so it doesn't become overwhelming. You should also be aware of how where your limit is in terms of projects. Now I know just purely from experience and the type of projects that I work on that my limit is four to five projects a month. If you see Q3 at the moment has five projects. That's simply because I would not allow myself to do any more than that because I know I wouldn't do them. It's no good saying, yeah, yeah, sure, I can do this in Q3, that's no problem at all, and end up with eight or nine projects. It's, <laughs> I know my limits. There's no way if I'm going to do a good job on my projects, I could do eight or nine. And this is the key here. If you're in a position where you've now been flooded with projects, you have something that you can take to your boss and say, look boss, I cannot do all these projects. There's too many for me to do in this quarter or this month. 
This is why the, one of the reasons why this is so powerful. It's not just for your planning purposes. It's also a record that you can take to your superiors and say, look, you're giving me too much work. I am not going to be able to get all these projects done in this quarter. It also gives you evidence that you can use to renegotiate projects. So that's the personal level. But to go with the Cal Newport idea and take it to a team-based one, because I know many of you are managing teams, I have created here a, a, a team, a, a fictional team, and the team members are Max, Lando, Charles, Lewis, and Susie. Now, in here, we have uh, also a section, as you can see, is to be assigned. Now, the thing is, I know right now that Max does have capacity to do a bit more work because he's only working on two things at the moment. Lando is probably a little bit at his limit, as is Charles. Lewis perhaps has capacity, and maybe Susie also has capacity. And this, as a manager, you can use to manage your team and the work that they're doing. So you've got work coming in from whatever area that you've got. Now, this particular team is a, let's just say, an advertising agency. And this is one of the teams that we've got a designer, a copywriter, a pro project manager, so on. Well, it doesn't really matter the kind of work they're doing. It could be anything. So I've got work coming in to be assigned down here. Now, it's up to me as the manager to allocate this work. So uh, Max, looking at this, Max is doing images and thumbnail design. So let's just imagine that Max is the designer. I know he's got spare space and I know the spring sale is coming. So all I would need to do is move that banners for spring sale into Max's column. And of course, I need to inform Max, this is what you need to do. Now, again, if you're using Todoist, it's really up to you if you wish to share this with your team or not. In a sense, this is like having an electronic whiteboard that you may have already in your office with work assigned. But as a manager, this is giving you a very clear picture of the members of your team and their workloads. If you're not doing this, you could be, you may let's just say that Lando is really good at hitting deadlines. So you just, because of this safety that you know that Lando is going to hit his deadlines, that you just allocate all the work to him or urgent work to him. Now, that's not really fair on Lando. It doesn't really help. And you may end up losing Lando because you're overwhelming him with work. So this gives you an opportunity to be able to look at the work that you've got coming in and you can then decide, right, where can I allocate this work? It also means that you can go to your boss and say, look, my team is overwhelmed right now. These are the things to be assigned. We're not starting this yet. And this is the whole point of Cal Newport's book idea, where you are saying, look, this is my capacity. I am full right now. This work is now on the waiting list. As soon as something comes available, I will start doing it. Now, most bosses that I've worked with said they would love this idea simply because now they've got real data. They're not believing that their team is not necessarily telling them the truth or trying to not do all this work. This gives you an accurate picture of exactly who's working on what and when. So these boards that you can set up in Todoist, they give you an option to be able to use it at a personal level to see what your workload is. Now, with that, I am going to strongly recommend that you figure out what your limit is. Now, most of us, generally, if we think about it, we would know what our limit is. If you don't, do some experimenting. See what you can find. Where is your limit? You don't want to be adding so many projects and then not doing the project, you know, some of the projects, having to reschedule them and then blaming the tools. No, because you're the one who said, yeah, I'll do it this quarter, when you probably knew already you were not going to be able to do it. And when you've got something like this, you've got something that you can take to your boss and say, look, boss, I am unable to do this. I have got so much work on at the moment. If you want this to be done, which of these projects are you willing to postpone? Or you can probably do it a bit more diplomatically than that, but that's the whole point. Because just saying I'm too busy doesn't really help your boss. 
just saying too busy isn't going to help your boss if you're managing a team either because everyone says they're too busy. Here you've got real evidence that you can share with your boss, with the team and say, is this okay? So that's just something I wanted to put out there because I know boards is a phenomenal t uh, tool that you can use that's going to really help you to get much more clarity on what you are working on and what you're not working on. By the way, just one quick tip. If I just take you back to my personal list here, you'll notice in the personal list that there are no actual tasks. These are what I call uh, non-completable tasks. Now I know a lot of people ask me how do you do that? What you do is when you're writing the task you put asterisks then spacebar. So if I remove the, the spacebar here and just save that you'll see that the checkpoint, the, the checkoff point comes back. If I go back in there and put the asterisks in and space and then save the checkbox disappears. This is just purely for planning. You can move things around in here and move them to different quarters. It's not actual real tasks. You know, training for the half marathon, that's actually a, diet, a, a calendar event for me. It's my training sessions. The Ultimate Productivity Workshop, that's a task. What do I need to do next? It could be to work on the slides or work on the, the, the speaker notes. So those are the tasks. This is just telling me what I am currently working on. So I hope that's helped. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can use to do it boards with. I've always found them phenomenal. They've really helped me to get focused and stay focused in the quarter on what I'm actually working on. But with teams that I'm working with, I, I work, you know, my coaching program, this is something that we've put together with many of the managers to ensure that they know what their teams are working on. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you want to learn more about my current to-do setup, this video up here is the one to watch next.